Hi, this is Evan from Stock Music Musician, and in this video I want to teach you how to EQ loops and samples. I'm also the author of the book, How to Mix with EQ. I'll put a link to that in the description if you really want to learn more about EQ, but I'm going to kind of just talk briefly about my theory about how you EQ and how you can apply that to loops. The first thing I want to say though is maybe you don't need to apply any EQ to loops, or at least not as much as you think. Generally speaking, when you use loops, they have already been mixed by a producer, and so they should sound pretty good, and they will probably need less love than like other sounds that you're mixing in with them, because they've, you know, theoretically, if at least if you're buying from reputable sources, they've been processed. As I conceive <clears throat> of the mixing process, there are four stages to it. One, you want to remove unwanted frequencies. So this could be sub buildup, harsh resonances, things like that. Then you want to observe how your sounds sit together on the mix. You know, how does the kick sit with the snare? How does the 808 sit with the kick? How does the vocal sit with the chords? All of that and just kind of see what you want to prioritize along each part of the frequency spectrum and how they interact. From there, what you're going to want to do is carve out certain spaces so that everything can sound great. So you might have a really good 808 sample and you might have a really good kick sample and they both sound perfectly EQ'd and you couldn't do more to EQ them better. But if you have them playing together, you have a problem because they're taking up the same frequency. So there you might want to do some cutting to slot those two sounds together. But it's not really that you're trying to enhance any of those sounds. The sounds sound great. You bought good loops or good samples. It's just that you need to make them sit together. Finally, after you've got everything slotted and sitting nice together, you might want to do a few boosts or cuts to enhance the mix and make it more tonally in the way that you want to do it. So this video is sponsored by Beat Production, making some of the best loops and samples around. They are offering any viewer a free download of like their sampler packets. Oh, got over 200, maybe 300 samples. There's a link below to get it. So all the samples I'm using on this are from there. Um, that, like I said, about 200 to 300 free samples. Just click the link down below to grab that. And now let me talk practically about how we're going to uh, EQ loops. So I've got this loop here. And I'll, listen, I'll let you listen to it with and without EQ. And like I said, generally you don't necessarily need to do any EQ on the lip on these loops to remove unwanted frequencies such as um, harshness or resonance. But once you start manipulating loops, for example, chopping them and pitch shifting them, there can be artifacts that get introduced, resonances, all sorts of nasty stuff comes up. So even though if your unpitched loop doesn't need EQ, your pitched loop may need EQ. And so I take back everything I said. So listen to this loop right now. I've pitched it down four semitones and that introduced some interesting things. So we'll listen without EQ. And now, you know, as you develop your ear, what you'll hear is there's just some like, like weird resonances going on. And there's a fair amount of low end, which sounds good, but in the context of a mix with a kick in an 808, let's listen now, because it's all about hearing things in context. So it's just a little, a little harsh and there's probably a little more low end than we need it's sitting on those those low notes so let's turn on the eq we'll talk about these changes in a sec but uh let's just listen to it first you hear it's just much clearer much cleaner it sits with the mix way better um, there's a little less of that annoying sound to it and it allows the kick in the 808 to go through. So let's now open up this Pro Q3 and see what we've got going on here. We'll turn off the individual EQ moves and we'll turn them on one at a time. So the first thing 
I talked about is that you want to remove harsh resonances and unwanted frequencies. Um, and this loop in its original pitch sounds great, but once I started pitching it down, weird stuff happens, which is frequently the case. That's half the fun of pitching loops and samples, but I mean, you need to be aware of it. So the way to find these resonances is to first really listen to your ear with your ear. Let's solo this. And I, you can, you know, you're not supposed to EQ in solo, but when it comes to finding bad frequencies, you can do that in solo. But when it comes to slotting things in, take it off of that, off of solo. So let's listen. Uh, and the way, first we want to listen with our ears, then we'll listen more intensely. So there's like a bit of a, first there's like a, uh, that I don't love. And there's also the, so what I want to do is just do a narrow boost and we'll sweep. And I feel like that, you know, it's in the low mids and then there's in, in the high mids is what I'm hearing. So let's start low and start sweeping. About a 10 dB narrow boost. And let's turn it on. Yes, when you boost anything by 11 dB narrowly, you'll notice resonances. But what I found here is like, it's on the guitar, there's just a little ringing out. You hear that? We can actually, with Pro Q3, hear what this individual frequency sounds like. So we'll cut that out. And like I said, I heard one higher up too. So let's theoretically boost and cut up here. There it is. Right there, right. That's another one, but this one is the one that really bothers me. You could also cut this higher one. I, I try really think that you probably shouldn't make more than two or three EQ moves on a loop, especially something that has a bunch of instruments built into it. You're just going to start hollowing it out, making it weird, introducing phase issues. So like find one or two spots that really bother you, take them out, uh, you know, with like a five to six dB cut. I usually just recommend going in three dB increments. It's, you don't need to overthink it by any means. Uh, and so now let's listen to the loop on and off. just much more focused, um, a lot less of that resonance, so it's more pleasing to the ear. Now in the context of the mix, we'll turn solo off now that we've removed the harsh frequencies. Now we're trying to slot this in with the low end. And so even though I like the way the kind of the bass string feels on this loop by itself, when I solo it, it doesn't really sit that great with the 808 and with the kick. So let's listen. So now we'll turn on a high pass filter. You hear how the 808 actually jumps out? Come on, let's turn it off. So that just sounds way better to me with the 808. The loop itself, it makes the loop itself sound a little bit worse, but it makes the mix sound better. That's what I mean by slotting things in. And then finally, you can enhance the loop by either cutting or boosting in ways that tonally just enhance the vibe of the mix. So this is kind of a lo-fi song, so I just want to use a high pass filter up here to cut out some of the high end and make it feel a little more spooky. You could also boost if you felt like a song needed, you know, more this or, you know, you need a little punch here. You need a little sheen or a shimmer boost with wide strokes, wide cues uh, or shelves. 
but this song does this loop doesn't need any more air it doesn't need any more low end it sounds the way i want i just want to roll off some of this high end so it sounds more lo-fi so let's listen as we do that something like this what i like to do is figure out just where the eq starts to bite and then roll it back just a little bit like i'm not looking for you know the world's most extreme high cut here i just want like a little off the top so listen let's listen with and without somewhere right around 4k It just sits a little better. Also, there is some more of that harshness we talked about earlier that's still kind of floating around up there. And so we take that out. We lose a little bit of the atmosphere, um, but probably we will get that back when I run some things through reverb, and then it'll be a cleaner sound that goes to reverb. I really hope this helps. I hope you get the most out of your loops and samples now. And I do want to remind you, A, to get that free sample pack from the link below from beatproduction.net. And if you really want to learn how to EQ your music, do pick up my book. I'll put a link to it down below, uh, how to mix with EQ. Thanks for watching.